Deborah McKenzie and this is BBC News. Good morning. If you're interested in skiing, well, there's not been a lot of snow in Colorado. In fact, in Vail, there's no snow at all in the lower slopes. And if you compare it to this time last year, we had a good 80 centimetres on the lower slopes. Now, some of the resorts are beginning to open, though, and reporting good peace conditions, namely Killington, Keystone and also Stowe. So all hope is not lost. And a bit closer to home, too, Val d'Isère and Clusters are actually opening this weekend. And the forecast is more snow, but it is going to turn milder as we go through next week. Now today what's happening is you can see various areas of low pressure out to the east of Europe, again bringing in some unsettled weather as it has been for a wee while in the southeastern Mediterranean. Also strong winds and you can see quite nicely exactly where we're expecting the snow. By tomorrow though high pressure starts to build in so for many western parts things are a lot more settled. So to look at some of the cities in northern parts of Europe, chilly, cloudy and settled for most. But as we push over towards southern areas of Europe, again, a fair amount of sunshine around. But as you can see in the southeastern Mediterranean, while well, we are looking at a bit more cloud and a more unsettled feel to the weather generally. Now, as we head into our own dawn period today, it's much milder. You really will notice it if you're heading out earlier than it was yesterday. In fact, we're looking at 10s and 11s for many parts of the British Isles. And over the next couple of days, it will stay like that until we get to about Monday, late Monday, Tuesday. You can see how we see a return to the lighter greens and also the blues, indicating that the temperature at night is going to fall. The blues telling us we're looking at temperatures of freezing or below. So it looks like we could well see another touch of frost, but that's a fair way away yet. This morning, too, a fair amount of cloud around, still producing some patchy drizzle in southern parts of the British Isles and also in western-facing coasts. And we'll keep a fair amount of cloud here as we go through the course of the day. But some breaks out towards the east, even some sunny spells as we go through the course of the afternoon. It should brighten up a touch too in southern parts of the British Isles in that we'll lose most of the patchy rain and drizzle. But there still will be quite a lot of cloud round and still a fair amount of cloud out towards the west. And if anything, the wind strengthening in the northwest and the rain turning a wee bit more persistent. But the temperatures again much better than they were yesterday. We're looking at between 11 degrees Celsius in the Outer Hebrides to 15 as we push over towards York and 13 over towards Birmingham. So feeling a lot milder than yesterday. And if you're off to the rugby today, well, at Twickenham for the England match, it should stay dry and bright and sunshine coming through. At Murrayfield in Edinburgh for Scotland match, well, again, fair amount of cloud around, but nonetheless, much milder than yesterday. But for the France match in central France, well, it's going to be cold and the likelihood is we'll see some sleet. For football, again, up in Newcastle, we're looking at about 14 degrees Celsius and some sunshine coming through. And for the football in Southampton, again, cloud coming and going, and we're looking at about 13 degrees Celsius. Now, by Sunday, we've got another front coming into the northwest. It will be steadily pushing in through Scotland and Ireland, heavy bursts of rain on it at times as it moves down towards the south. Now, it could be heavy in places, and it will be preceded by some blustery showers through southern parts of England and Wales. Behind it, though, a brighter scenario, but still sunshine and showers, and some of the showers later on could be wintry to higher ground in Scotland, and it will feel cooler here as well. We're looking at about 8 degrees Celsius as opposed to the 11 that we're expecting today. But down in the south, we continue with the higher temperatures at 14 in London. Twenty-four hours a day. Jonathan King has been found guilty of sexual assault. As it breaks. Wherever they plot, we will strike the terrorists. Whenever it breaks. The first major press conference of the war in Taliban territory. BBC News 24, because the news never ends. Get ready to experience a major new adventure. Walking with Beasts Interactive from BBC I. Available 24 hours a day. Especially designed for each digital TV service. It's the first interactive documentary of its kind. Explore the evidence as we answer your questions. How do we know about a killer pig that could eat a rhino? How can we prove the existence of a heavily armoured mammal the size of a small car? Start your adventure by going to the tech service via BBCI and see it your way, anytime, day or night.
is BBC News 24 with me, Deborah McKenzie. In a moment, Asia Today, but first at 3.30, a summary of the main news. The threatened football strike has been called off. The Professional Footballers Association and the game's ruling bodies have announced a settlement of their dispute over television revenue. The PFA are to announce the details of the new deal to their membership after the weekend, but it's known that the PFA will receive £52.5 million over the next three years. The Football Association's chief executive, Adam Crozier, said he was thankful that an amicable agreement had been reached after lengthy negotiations. The good news is that collectively uh, we've come to a solution where common sense has prevailed and an amicable settlement has been reached which all parties believe to be fair and equitable. It's, agreement, it's an agreement based on a new level of trust and partnership with a mutual respect for the role of the players at the heart of the game. The opposition Northern Alliance in Afghanistan says it's made further advances towards the besieged city of Kunduz, the last northern stronghold of the Taliban. It claims to have taken over the small town of Allahabad, some 14 miles from the city, without a fight. U.S. warplanes have continued to bomb Taliban positions around Kunduz, despite further negotiations between the Taliban and the Northern Alliance to allow Taliban fighters to surrender the city. In Belfast, loyalists have decided to suspend their protest at the Holy Cross Girls School in the Ardoyne area of the city. The protest had just entered the 12th week. At a meeting last night, Protestant residents voted in favour of a package of community safety measures. The Irish political party, Fianna Foyle, which heads the Irish government, has taken out a full-page advertisement in today's Times newspaper calling for the British government to close down the Sellafield nuclear reprocessing plant in Cumbria. The party is trying to stop the opening of a mixed oxide fuel plant at Sellafield. It also wants to stop vessels transporting nuclear material to and from it. The Republic's Prime Minister, Bertie Ahern, explained why his party had taken the unusual step of putting its case in the Times. 